Hey everyone, it's Jolt here. This is going to be a very quick update. I want to keep to my commitment of maintaining a vlog, but also I'm extremely pressed for time. So this is where I am at the moment. I have a book outline that's altogether 9,000 characters long. It structures the book into four parts. And this is really, you can imagine 9,000 characters is a lot of characters. So this dives deep into each of the uh, chapters and the entire book. There are altogether at the moment 15 chapters in the book. So it's a pretty long book and it has this arc starting from understanding why we're in the situation we are in, giving you a bit of cognitive science and some uh, learning history, as well as then offering a solution. So, but rolling back the time, because I've been busy with the book over the last uh, couple of days, and many, I've tried many things, so this is just a condensed summary of the actual uh, machinery I'm uh, running. So I'm going to be talking about this in just a second. But before that, I wanted to show you that I started to now focus in on the actual book writing process. I first started with this approach where I had this visual summary of the introduction. Each card has a back of the note element and then I converted it into text and generated my content from this. But I found that this is going to be extremely slow. And I also found that my existing cards inform my thinking here but I cannot really reuse them for my book project. So that's something for me to contemplate for the future, how my visual Zettelkasten works or doesn't work because when it came to the time to use those cards to put together my storyline, I can draw lots of ideas from it, but it doesn't do the magic of I can place those icons here, connect them in a story and bang, the book is there. So instead, because in the end I need to produce a book and that's about producing text, I went for this process and let me just quickly walk you through of how I'm now generating text and I actually am getting some traction. So I already have two chapters delivered and if I had a full day where I can only concentrate on this, I could get the entire book draft out. Unfortunately, my days have been extremely hectic. I had doctor's appointments. I have all sorts of work commitments. I have the cohort running. I had some urgent ex releases. I have Technovisual PKM. It's a lot to handle. And really finding the odd moment to work on the book is not a good way, but I think I'm making good progress here. And <laughs> I'm actually excited about the content of the book. I think this is going to be a game-changing book, a fundamental book about visual PKM. I really think that I have a very strong message and content to deliver. But let me show you how my process works. So right now I'm using three different tools. So I'm using Gemini or Gemini, I'm not sure how to pronounce it. So this is Google's model and I used Gemini 2.0. This is an experimental model. It's free. That was one reason I used it. But equally, Gemini 2 can take 2 million tokens as a context. That's a huge, huge, huge context. And so I thought that I can add all my content, which means the video transcripts, my all my YouTube transcripts, all my blog posts, everything that I've written about Visual PKM, I can put it in here. Plus I can add a good selection of books and articles that I want in the model as well. So that's what I did with Gemini 2, I found that actually I ran into an internal server error if the size, the token size went above 1.4 million. So I couldn't use the 2 million tokens, but still that's a huge context window. Then I have Notebook LM and I already 
explained about how I filled notebook LM with content, so I won't bore you with that at the moment. And then I finally decided to bite the bullet, so to say, and I bought a one month subscription to ChatGPT for $20. So far, I was using the free service, but I was hitting rate limits and because I need to move with this book, those rate limits didn't help. And then I also noticed that with the paid version, I get the projects and projects are super helpful because then I can have project chats grouped under the project. I can add documents to provide context for the project, as well as I can create custom instructions where I can talk about the book's target audience, the proposed style for the prose, the purpose of the book, etc. So I can give ChatGPT a context to help it generate more consistent and more meaningful story in terms of a story arc. So these are the tools that I've set up and then let's look at my workflow. So first of all, let's look at this once at the beginning process. So what I did was I filled Gemini 2 with all of this data I mentioned and I asked it to generate an outline for my book. So it produced an initial rough outline. I did some editing on this outline and then I fed it into Notebook LM and I asked it to recommend missing elements and provide me feedback based on all the reference materials here. So I took that output from Notebook LM and I fed it back to Gemini 2 to give me a second version of the outline. So this was now based on the initial outline, my feedback on it, the Notebook LM editions. And so this is the core of my outline, which then I loaded to Obsidian and I started to improve on this outline in Obsidian. And for improving on this outline, I followed the following process. I took various books from my list of books that I've read and I want to use as reference in this book project. And I asked Notebook LM to generate a podcast about each of those books, a separate 20-30 minute podcast that focuses on that specific book. And as I was listening to that podcast about a specific source, I had ChatGPT in hand and I was having a dialogue about what I'm hearing, how it relates to my outline and to my book project. And in that process, I actually created this dialogue transcript with ChatGPT that's both a reflection on my book outline as well as a reflection on the source. And I asked, then I asked ChatGPT to, I fed my book outline to ChatGPT. I had, of course, the dialogue transcript there. And I asked it for feedback on my outline, which I edited in Obsidian. So I got a new version of the outline. And I went through this process, I think five times with five different books. So each time I generated a podcast from Notebook LM, I listened to it, I did the dialogue transcript. I then took version, the next version of my book outline to ChatGPT. I asked for feedback, I updated my outline in Obsidian, and through these cycles, I was able to mold the initial outline that Gemini provided into something that is really personal, that's based on my own personal experience. It's filled with personal anecdotes and reflections. And it is really something that is mine. So now I have an outline that I started with an initial outline that helped me get from the blank page to something meaningful. And through this process, I achieved two things. I refreshed my memory about a whole bunch of important books in the subject. And I was able to 
refine my outline. And now I have the outline. I went over to ChatGPT and asked, first of all, ChatGPT to condense this 9,000 word long outline into something short because when I'm producing chapters, I need to make sure that everything important fits into the context window. And 9,000 words just for the full outline is very expensive. So my process here is the following. So I am actually generating each of the chapters with ChatGPT. And this is my chapter generating process. So I'm repeating this process many times. The way the process works is, so I have the condensed outline. I also have the full book outline. And from the full book outline, I cut always the next chapter or the next section. And first of all, I feed that into Notebook LM to ask for chapter or section relevant refer references. And then I take those references, maybe some of the reference sources, as well as my chapter outline, the detailed one, and my condensed entire book outline. I feed it into my ChatGPT project. And then before generating my chapter, I ask ChatGPT to ask me clarification questions to have a discussion about that chapter. And once I'm done with that, actually I provide some of these inputs again. So they're at the top of the context window. And with this input, I ask ChatGPT to generate my section draft. I review it and edit it in ChatGPT. And when I'm comfortable, I save it as my chapter in Obsidian. And so this way, I feel that this process right here, because I have everything uh, in the previous two uh, steps, I have everything covered. So I have actually my models configured. I went through this process already. I went through this five times and I have a very robust book outline. And now I'm in this last cycle of iteratively generating each of my chapters. And I feel that if I had a full day, maybe by end of Saturday, I'm going to have an entire rough draft of the book, all the pages. Of course, it still needs to be reviewed and edited. And I need to make sure that the references are fact checked and I need to add my illustrations, etc. But at least I'm going to have the corpus of my book available. And I think that's a huge step in terms of getting to a product that I can launch by the 15th of March, which I'm still keep fingers crossed. I hope I can match. So that's my quick update today. Sorry if it was rushed. This is a single take update, but I need to get back to working on the book. So I didn't want to spend too much time recording, but I also wanted to keep to my commitment that I keep you updated. Thank you for watching. And as always, I welcome your inputs in the comments. I'm going to share the form, the survey from the previous video again in the link below. I'm still interested in your feedback on the book covers. Maybe indeed I have an update on the book cover. So let me just quickly show you that. So I have two more book covers here. I'm actually leaning towards this book cover at the moment, but maybe this is an interesting one as well. And in terms of title, probably the title is going to be based on your feedback, but I'm still interested in your feedback. And the survey is going to be visual thinking for the digital mind. So beyond text, visual thinking for the digital mind. I was playing with this idea of building an ambidextrous digital mind, which sounds a bit more fancy, um, but actually this is what the book is about. But then you don't understand why the colors and why the paint. So that's why I think it's going to be visual thinking for the digital mind. Also, this is what got the most votes from you. But again, please look at the survey. Let me know what you think about the cover designs. 
these designs are not there, but there are designs that are similar. So I'm interested in which one you like. So thanks again for your time. And I hope to see you in the next update.